than Pangolier when it first came out, and then things evened up a little bit since then. Obviously, Vici were willing to let it through against Mesky, and I uh, would say they probably paid the price for it. So, looking at this, the, the teams, uh, most of the team teams, for instance, Vici, not gonna let that hero. Yeah. Mineski already played it on both position five and three. So, if you give this hero away to Mineski early in the draft, it's not only a good hero, but it's also a flex pick for them. So, it's like, you don't really know what you're facing anyway. So, secret, get rid of it. I think it's. I totally think you, understandable. You gotta ban Arc Warden here, right? If you're Mineski. I would expect that as well. They've banned like a lot of the bigger, cheesier threats out of the pool immediately in their draft so far. That's a lot of um that's a lot of classic heroes for Ace, I would say, for Secret here. There's the Timber Saw, there's Weaver, uh there is the Arc Warden that you mentioned that they play on mid one. Ember is there for mid one. Naga has been really popular. So far in the tournament, I would imagine that getting banned out. And the Pudge is there that Yapsor played yesterday. So there's like plenty of options here. I'm mainly just trying to look for a pattern. So when you go into this drafting phase, I feel like there's like two or three elements in Captain's Draft that you don't really have in Captain's Mode. First, you look for quote unquote broken heroes like Dark Willow, like how many of them are in? Can we get one? Should we just get rid of it? Secret just got rid of it. Then you look if there's like a shortage of something. Are there a few mid heroes? Are there a few physical damage heroes? Are there bad pushing heroes? Um, and then you check for the matchups. Like, like a hero like Timbersaw in Captain's Draft can be ridiculous in some games. If the hero pool doesn't have any good innate, uh, any good heroes with innate abilities against Timbersaw, he can just carry a game alone almost. But this pool seems pretty well rounded to me. Actually, there's nothing that stands out. It's just ridiculous with this Willow out already. So I think we're going to be banning, uh, just target banning heroes against players more than anything. Great call on that Arc Warden in the end. We're going to see him out. Axe, as we've seen, been used a couple times in the uh, groups yesterday. So uh, yeah, he'll be out of there as well. Suns fan, anybody standing out to you? Uh, I want to see a Drow Ranger first pick and then a Spectre counter wow. immediately after. <laughs> That would be pretty I'd sweet. I'd love to see that again. Secret are actually pretty good at playing Drow Strats. Um, Ace has historically been a big fan of the hero. Back in Danish Bears, they were one of the teams that would actually first pick Drow. Even when it fell out of favor, they were still running Drow Strats. Uh, he, I believe he was the captain and drafter of that team. So yes. if he has any influence and any say in this, maybe he wants a Drow if it's good for them. Um, as far as the pool goes, I don't know if it's like... Remaining. You know, when you pick Drow, you build the lineup around Drow. She has to be the centerpiece, you need to use the aura for something. I just don't think there's like that great pairings except Visage, maybe. Weaver. Weaver? Weaver. It's Weaver. not too bad, actually. I think the position for Weaver in Captain's Draft especially is actually pretty strong, it historically is speaking. Uh, it got nerfed since back then, though. Like, the Drow aura is a lot worse on level 1, and Weaver was one of the heroes that drew a lot of benefit from having the aura right from the start. I can't remember, now the Drow aura gives like 3 damage, 2? On level one, it's like garbage. Yes. Well, speaking really of comments, how about a Magnus? Did you say how, speaking of garbage? I said speaking of comp. Did I say garbage? Uh, yeah, I think right. I said combos. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Everything coming out of my mouth is garbage to you. Apparently. Oh, apparently. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, speaking of garbage, Puttons fan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the the empower. How many empowered heroes do we have in this draft? Uh, that's a good point. I can't see the heroes right now, so that's a bit difficult to say. We have a couple empowered. Uh, Pu Puppy members, looks though. pretty empowered. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey good call, though. We got a mag. Wow. First pick, mag. So that is also a hero that I believe Mineski have been running sometimes. I think Ice plays it. Jabs used to play Magnus, I believe, when he played mid. Uh, obviously, now he plays position four, and that's been he has been really good since he transitioned role. I think it's been very beneficial for uh, for himself and obviously for Mineski. Um, you know, usually you would be like, oh, there's a Timber soft Ice 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 here, but Secret obviously willing to let it through, and I think there's a lot of good counters to Timber this game. OD is very good, Disruptor is pretty good. Oh no, we have to see Mineski again, there's I can't so, see the picks. There's so much Magnus in the You have the Ember Spirit, you have the Monkey King. Yeah. Um, probably unlikely that they get the Monkey Monkey as well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ember has fallen out of favor a lot, which is a shame for Secret, because they obviously have one of the best players in the world on that hero in mid one. But maybe with this Magnus first pick, they're planning for it as one of their options further down the line. There comes Disruptor. Disruptor. Also, if you have the Magnus, the, the CK feels a lot harder to answer in this pool. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, CK is one of those heroes, you, you need AoE against them. So yeah. certain drafts, you can definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, there actually aren't that many good counter CK heroes. Does this prevent AM potentially for Secret being picked with the Disruptor on the other side? I mean, no. AM, AM and power in general is good, but... It is. I think if you pick AM with mag like this, you're... Oh, yes. Oh, nice. Yes. 
I think if, C if C3 are planning for AM, I this might be the type of game or the type of hero pool where you maybe don't go Battle Fury with the Mangos Empower and you just play the Empower only and get more of a combat build. Because I think if Secret go for an anti mage, uh, Mineski will be playing a higher pace game with these two supports that they've picked up so far. Very aggressive, very quick to come online in the game. And at the same time, also two heroes that falls, fall off pretty pretty much after the 20 minute mark unless they have uh, outstanding games. I'd like to see a little bit of Death Prophet. There's a, a hero that a lot of people are running, you know? She's starting to fall out of favor. You don't like Death Prophet? No. She's great. It's so boring. Boring? You pop your ult, you take towers. What is up with this this haste talent? Do go for the Ember. Okay. You, okay. you guys like this haste Very talent on Death pick. Prophet? Keep trying to talk about it. It's just not a good talking point. I don't know. It's, no. It's horrible. But yeah, people, great. People Conversation keep, over. People keep taking it, though. <laughs> I need somebody. Cinder, why do they take that? This is no, kind stop. of post. I don't know. Well, why do they keep taking that talent? No one cares. Hey, Stone. Tell me. I think the Ember pick is a bit early, <laughs> to be honest. I hate um, you so much. <laughs> the, so I'm, I'm just looking at the pool, and there's actually a couple of pretty bad lane matchups for Ember here. Uh, Death Prophet's very good against Ember in lane. OD is a good pick against Ember in lane. Mushi loves playing both. Monkey King has a really good matchup against Ember as well. But, you know, you got to choose what you what you show. And maybe Secret feel like if they don't grab Ember now, Moon might take it from Ineski. They played it earlier. Uh, it was today, right? They played Ember, I believe. So... Ineski did show their support, so there's no real instant lockdown like that for Ember. That is true. Um, a player of mid one's caliber is going to be able to dodge most of Disruptor's kit. Yeah, he's um, very good against uh, Disruptor. Obviously, yeah, so I think they probably feel that uh, this gives them scalability later. It's a threat that they can't really answer right now. Like the Lion pick. I think this is a really good hero for Secret in general. Uh, yep, sorry. Uh, hey! Okay, I know who I'm picking. Now, I gotta say, <laughs> one of the best things about Death Prophet is the haste talent. Can we talk a little bit about the haste talent? Now that it's relevant, can now somebody <laughs> tell me why that's good? Hmm? I don't think he's gonna get level 25 this game, so who cares? It, it, it's always a possibility. It is a possibility. If it gets to that, I'll right. talk about why the other talent is great. Well, we're not going to be casting this game, so we can't. That is can't, actually true. I'll tell you backstage. <laughs> great. And anybody wondering? Just me? Okay. No, no Good. one cares. OD got picked. Great. Hey. We got two mid heroes now. What's you know what OD doesn't have in this game that could be useful? It doesn't have a haste talent. <laughs> yeah. If OD had a haste talent, <laughs> that hero would See, be that, really that's good. Better. <laughs> that's better. A level 25? Level yes. 10 haste talent? A level 10. I'll be good. What if he had a really bad, just a hero that's really bad, but has the most broken level 10 talent? Like, literally just haste. I remember, that instantly reminded me of Lina, just getting that 30-second yeah, respawn. Oh, yeah. That was... Instant respawn. Yeah. I uh, miss those stupid. days. Mm. Yeah, that was not a bad hero either, though. So can I ask you guys, the uh, the OD, maybe I'm not the best Dota player. It doesn't make a lot of sense to be in this draft. Usually you pick up an OD when you have heroes that have a lot of mana that they need to be spent. Oh, wait. Yeah. Well, that works, but where's the setup? Typically, OD is a big setup boy. Um, yeah. There's a couple of things that OD is good for in this game. First of all, it gives them flexibility in laning because both OD and DP have good matchups against Ember, so now they can put either of them in the safe lane. Uh, OD has a save against Lion Hex, against the stun. They get a way to counterplay RP. If OD's in a good position with a blink dagger, can maybe blink disrupt the, or blink astral the key target from RP. Uh, obviously, the more heroes RP hits, the harder it gets to get the right target. Uh, or even if you do, you can still lose the fight. Um, it's just... I, I think the OD pick is pretty solid for them. The may, It's also a setup for Hook. Pretty nice. As you said, Sind, Ember's going to have a hard time finding a good lane in this game. Yeah, and I think so. As far as the save goes, again, uh, you often want to trade up with a Magnus for a core. Death Prophet is generally a hero that, if you fight her at all, you're going to have to all in and burst her down. And so OD's very good at disrupting that, too. Yep. There's their all right. power, hero number two. We'll see if they get a third. They could. So even though you Play have Monkey empower, do you, do you still think you go Ember the the magic build, mm. despite having empower? That's a good question. Because you have a physical DP. Uh, depends on what position Monkey King is, right? Yeah, I I feel like Monkey King position four has fallen out of favor a lot, and with good reason. Um, the question is in this game if, if they're considering it because it doesn't really have a good core matchup yet. So maybe they want to run. So well, we'll see. Oh, we should also mention soon. historically speaking as well in Captain's draft, even though things fall out of favor in Captain's mode. It's actually more common to see these, these crazier positions played by yeah. by weird heroes. Although that's not that weird, I suppose. I mean, Monkey King support, it definitely has a good matchup against Pudge support. It's two melee supports facing off, and Monkey loves that matchup, obviously. Oh, oh, it is yeah. indeed a support Monkey King, more than likely. They could play support CK, which is also a bit of an oddball. I mean, I feel like it could work in this one, though, because with Magnus in power, you know, he becomes kind of a carry on his own, even if he is a support. He's just hitting hard no matter what, doesn't need too many items. This is really drafted around the Magnus, in my opinion. I think it's going to work out great. Any thoughts, Jack, on uh, this draft from Secret? You think it's stronger? 
Well, he doesn't see the tenth pick. Well, yet. It's five v four, so right now it's definitely. I think secret. Do you think it? Uh, let me <laughs> let him answer. You got That's this pretty one. good right now. Again, I thought, <laughs> thought CK was a pretty big threat early on in this draft, I and mean, it hasn't really been addressed. And there isn't much left in that way of being able to deal with it. I think if anything, um, Neski can try to draft very aggressively here. You know, one thing I it's never really noticed good. was how ripped OD is. Look at those pectorals. That guy. Yeah, it's kind of tricky. How good is Bristle back this game? <laughs> don't ignore your host. That's <laughs> rude. Don't, don't ignore me. So talk about he his physique. Our host and also is talk worthless. about the haste talent on Death Prophet. <laughs> Jesus. Good You've Lord. got three things we need you to talk about before you move to Bristleback. Or do they want to timber themselves and start a physical damage? <laughs> Everybody's ignoring We're trying to. I'm the host! We split off into factions here. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Bristleback, you were talking about some loot. No, we, got, we moved on yeah, to timber how about, already. How about you All get right. Centaur here? I don't know. Then you can give haste to Death Prophet. What she won't you? have to take that at 25. Oh my god, what a <laughs> great <laughs> idea! This guy's got it! <laughs> Oh, please. Right. Get oh, wrecked. Oh, 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 no. Get wrecked. That will get her through until level 25. Nah, that's they, fantastic. They didn't use my set. They, they definitely lost this okay, game, Okay, well, that's just blatant advertising on a Valve-sponsored event. Well, so, uh... <laughs> Is that not allowed? <laughs> <laughs> Buy our tickets at our event. That's not allowed to say. That's all you're trying to say, Slime? Hey, how about some predictions, Suns fan? Are you going to go against your boy, the Centaur War Runner? Yeah, I think the hero's terrible. Secret. Okay, well, that was harsh and, and actually pretty sad. I, I try my best to get this hero buffed, so. Okay, Jack. Yeah, I like Secrets Draft as well. Any reason? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, no, that's it. Until, until the, you know, Centaur world comes up, they're pretty fast, too. Pretty okay, fast. great. <laughs> Cinderin. Yeah, I, I like Ten Secret more as well. Remaining. I think it's easier to execute. I think the Chaos Knight pick especially is... Is going to Five become a problem. Mm. Mm. So I'm sure you're you're gonna go against gonna go against that and yeah, be wrong 100%. as always. So no. no, he's always right. Actually, I'm right and Secret's got this one. But I do think Maneski could come through in the game. But until that time, perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, we should get ready for game number one in the. Thank you. Flip flopper. <laughs> I don't flip flop. This is. Whoa. Oh, let's go right. get on. Nice. I almost made a joke. Let's uh, head over to the casting duo. Who are they? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Those so much guys. for that great throw, Slacks. I really appreciate it. Here we are, game number one, Trent. It's going to be an exciting matchup. It is Secret versus Mineski. Of course, Secret, a very strong team. But Mineski have been looking good recently, my friend. Definitely. Uh, I think they're probably... The, the strong team maybe uh, coming into this one, looking at all that versatility. We've got Mushi, we've got Ice Ice Ice, tons of heroes. Uh, and Secret, I thought they were going to dominate EG, but it was much closer than I expected. So. Very close game. Yeah, Unfortunately, they have a mid one Ember, so that to me feels like a game winner. So yeah. uh, I'm also in favor of the panel there with the Secret pick. Yeah, I mean, they all thought Secret was going to do really well here. I'm enjoying the dancing for the Monkey King. Group. All right, now they definitely won. Yeah, this is, it's over already. Look at this. This is the best thing I've seen all day. What is, what is this? Is this a courier? Where yeah, did this come from? It's a beautiful courier. It's from the Pango he is thing, I believe. He is riding a horse. I love it. This is the best thing ever. It's like he just taunts all the time. It's fantastic. It, yeah, yeah, it's great. We will see. Uh, it looks like Secret as well as Mineski meeting. There's a smoke happening here. And they're going to run into each other potentially. Ace, they're looking to contest this room. Mineski have... They don't want any part of this. They're like, see ya. We're just going to back up towards our tier one tower. Although Secret are also backing at this point, not trying to contest either. They're moving across the map, trying to find other bounty rooms, perhaps. Yeah, everyone's just doing their early game little sword out here. Trying to figure out where we want to go. Trying to spot where your enemies are. I don't think anyone's going to get too greedy by the looks of it here. So, in terms of general lane setups, anything too whack going on? Mid one will be in his uh, home territory there of the mid lane. There's a courier still just pouncing about a in the dire jungle. Monkey King. Yeah. So the, the big thing that they were talking about, we, we thought maybe the Monkey King gets picked into a core position. Now they have a CK along with the Ember Spear with the Magnus in power, which feels like a very strong strat here for Secret. Earth Spike? They won't be able to steal the rune though, so. Up top, there's also a skewer there. But Mushi will be a-okay. But yeah, I mean, the Empower strat here from, from Secret, like they said, easy to execute, and, and it, it should work out pretty well for them considering the heroes that they have in this game. Yeah, I would say the Monkey King is probably the thing I'm least confident about in Secret Draft. Just in the support role, it hasn't been that successful lately. Uh, it kind of stopped getting picked for a reason, but that's Captain's Draft, right? You gotta kind of work with what's in the pool there, and they felt like this was the best option available for them after Mineski snagged the Pudge. Yeah, and I think especially Yapster playing it too, he's very versatile. So if anyone can make it work, I feel like it's going to be him on that hero. 
So we'll see. He'll, we'll see where he heads up in terms of where he rotates around the map. Bottom lane looks awful. There is the Centaur and this Pudge. Two beefy guys, and you're just a lion by yourself. Like, what can you really do here? Yeah, level one especially. I'm not sure if he can get too much done. And he should still maybe get some good CS, but this is the App Store is just clowning at this point. Gonna hit up a Ninja Boogie, and he'll get a Thunder Strike for good measure, but uh, he's already taken a lot of damage. He's gonna have to go back and Tango, regen up. He is just hopping. The App yeah. Store's having a good old time. Ninja Boogie's fine with trading. He knows he only has the Tree Dance there, so. Pretty big win there for Disruptor, I would say. And he just kind of rolls back up to the lane that he wants to go to. Yeah, so no worries there. And uh, the apps are getting level two, getting the Jingu Master potentially might make things a bit easier in terms of harassing and doing some work. But uh, this is a pretty good start for Nan in the mid lane. Seven last hits for him against the Ember Sphere to four. Um, and then every other lane is about even at this point in terms of farm. I like what Yapsor is doing here, though, making use of the hero in terms of the vision, so he can kind of keep an eye on. He knows that mid one is the most vulnerable person here. So you have a Death Prophet against an Ember Spirit, definitely favoring the Death Prophet, and she can keep putting on this pressure, try and lower him to a point where if Pudge just swoops in, he can do something. And then is here just to guard uh, his mid laner, force ba uh, jabs back towards the river. And uh, now they'll just fight over some bounty runes. Yeah. So this Jeb's Pudge, we'll see what he can get done uh, in terms of finding hooks, in terms of finding ganks. He's still level one. He's a haste rune now. He's everywhere. He's everything. And they're going to find jabs. I don't know if they go for this. The Earth Spike, they use the Primal Spring on top of it and a couple of auto attacks, but it's not going to be enough to get the kill. Jabs will be able to get back under the tower. That's and great. Safe. They zone him out. They force out some regen. They get both the bounty runes now. Nice little win. That's good stuff. Stomp coming in as well onto Ace as he was left alone. So yeah, Puppy, he's going to be level two. He can start, once he gets more levels, this, this lane gets easier. He can help out more. He can start spamming more spells when he gets the mana drain as well. But until then, the Centaur for Ice 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 should probably do fine. I mean, he's at eight last hits already. He's doing pretty well and pretty good in this off lane. Yeah, and you can see up top, Fada, you know, he ditched the mid lane a few years ago. He was probably happy to never see OD again, but Captain's Draft, yeah. you get a safe lane OD. The so safe lane OD. He's getting Astral, he's getting... To Denied. The Pretty classic frustrating. safe lane OD, as it were. Yeah, uh, but at least once you have some levels there on the Magnus, you can just Shockwave and keep up decently with the farm. Plus, he's going to have Soul Ring, which is quite the amazing item these days. Yeah, and so... Again, oh, say goodbye to your creep. He's actually going to skewer him into the tower, Mushi, and going to try to dive this and look for Fada, doing a lot of damage to the Thunderstrike. They glimpse back as well, but that might actually hurt them. He's going to the north and need one more auto attack. Potentially, he salves up in time. Mushi cannot find him and get this kill. In fact, Mushi takes a lot of damage. If Fata had mana, he might turn back around, but it is only level one Shockwave. And of course, Skewer was on cooldown. In the mid lane, maybe diving mid one, the Spirit Siphon. Good hook from Jabs. Nicely done. Searing Chains keeps him alive. There's the Boundless Strike on top of it. And Moon will be able to back up and won't be able to get the kill. Good effort trying to find it, but no such luck for Mineski there. Yeah, I'd say this is a, a little bit of a problem with the support Monkey King. Like, he has a pretty hard time with turn potential early on, especially when you have Tree Dance, because he has no threat with Jingu right now. Just level two, and just, I mean, I, you know, he can save his Ember Spirit, but the odds of them actually capitalizing and getting a decent kill are not very high. Yeah, so, Mineski, they have the kill potential with the Pudge. Um, We're still just waiting on first blood, man. Yeah, I mean, it's almost it, four minutes. It's a slow paced game, and it's really just setting it, settling into the laning phase right now. There, there's not much else happening. I mean, like you mentioned, the Astro's not really accomplishing that much, so. We might see something, another uh, Battle of the Bounty Runes, perhaps, or at least uh, maybe Jabs will get himself a decent rune in the river or something. Without Rot uh, first as well, it's kind of been a problem for him, but he'll be level two now after this Bounty Rune. Yeah. Sit away. Nicely done. Meanwhile, Searing Chains, Moon pushing back mid one after the Searing Chains, you can get the Spirit Siphon, a Crypt Swarm. And uh, not much they can do. Again, they just don't have enough damage yet. So this is a pretty slow paced game. Just all about really lane phase at this point. And the CK is getting good farm, but Mineski have uh, a lot of good CS as well in terms of what they're getting across the map. Yeah, for them, I think we're just looking at uh, the Death Prophet. Uh, she'll probably be the one to make something happen, right? That first ultimate, try and yep. decide on an objective together. Uh, in terms of dive recovery, like maybe if the CK can find someone down bottom and just start like going under tower and stuff, they don't really have the best options for like TP saves from inside of Mineski. The best thing they would have would be punishes with glimpses or something like right. that. But uh, DP and OD unlikely to make any big rotations without a lot of levels. So we'll see if maybe Seeker can find some sort of aggression first. As you, this monkey man, there's just this tree he's just walking around. around the middle. He's lane. been like, he's been a tree, he's been a rune, he's been a chicken. I don't, he's all over the place. He's also still level two at five minutes, so yeah, it's you'd like a little bit more experience, a little bit bigger of an impact on the monkey king, but there's not much you can do. Puppy's still staying bottom, he can't help him in that regard. Earth's play coming out, CK is there. They do have the level one stun, level two reality rip, which is off cooldown in one second. Good two second stun, plus the reality rip. The stomp comes out, the good stick charge. One more auto attack, maybe the south comes out, and Ice 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 will survive for now. Jabs rotating in, might find Puppy. The rock comes out, he gets the kill. They won't chase after Ace though. Too low is Ice Ice Ice, they'll back themselves up. Very good kill coming in. Good rotation from Jabs. Now oh, they jump from the Monkey King. They've got the Spirit Siphon up, mid one taking some damage. It's the Flame Guard going still. 
Now Nana needs to back himself up here, needs to be careful. Do they have the Searing Chains at the ready? Crypt one comes out, there's the Bound to Strike. Good Fairy Fire, one more auto attack, they get the kill. Secret, turn it around. And now Ninja Boogie looking for a Thunder Strike going to mid one. Searing Chains comes again, there's the Glimpse of the Rot, and mid one still getting chased down. Jabs wants it so bad, and he will find it, and the Apsar can only watch as they lose his mid laner. All right, finally, we get a little bit of a kill burst. Oh, and there, hook out of wow, the tree. that hook from Jabs was sick. Out of the tree, beautifully done. Can they find Ninja Boogie, though? Kinetic Field might keep him alive. Moon's coming back in. They have the Spirit Siphon. Maybe, I think it might be cool down. Actually, one left. He's going to use the Crypt Swarm along top of it. There's the hook just Ooh. connecting Jabs. Oh. That looked like uh, Slax's sniper eggs. He curved the bullet, I think, right there. <laughs> Still managed to get him. And three to one lead now for Mineski. Yeah, this is uh, Jabs starting to make some serious plays with these hooks. Doing a very good job. I'd say there's no doubt that it's the uh, the secret lineup, though, that you're kind of looking at to maybe come online a little bit later, right? Kind of that empower thing to give you farming up uh, potential there onto your CK, someone who tends to struggle a little bit with that. Same thing with the Monkey King, maybe adding a little bit of damage uh, onto him from that. So we're, we are just kind of waiting a little bit for old secret to come online. Yeah, I mean, once they get that empower really running, I mean, it's level one right now, but you max that empower all of a sudden, not just the CK, but the Ember Spirit farming like crazy, taking con taking control of the jungle. Um, and Fada's not doing that bad either, sitting at level five, getting close to six sitting at 23 last hits. So what you talked about, he was maybe going to have a rough early lane, but has since climbed back into it and has done a great job. I want to see Ace get his no-tail impression on here, man. I want to I wanna get this rotating CK. You know, trying to save somebody from some dives mid, maybe trying to get a kill on the Death Prophet. Yeah. For now, he seems content to just kind of chill down bottom. He's using his Phantasm to farm. No surprises there, just trying to take care of jungle camps and get the best that he can in terms of CS. But yeah, I mean, it would be nice to see him get aggressive because his team's not really doing too much of that right now. Radiant's top tower is oh, they really want to get something done here with the smoke. Then Boogie loses his. Jabs will play some wards, trying to spot an easy hook. Rift, Bird Spike, again, Ice 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 is rather tanky. Two seconds done, they use the Stampede, but he's already dead, and Jabs might be next. The Tree Dance coming in, Jabs one more auto attack, can't quite find it. He'll get back under the tier one tower, Ninja Boogie is going to be next. Reality Rift, a couple of auto attacks should do the job. Puppy and Earth Spike, it is there. The hook save, it's just the dead body going back to the tier two tower, and Ace gets a double kill. Oh, there you go. That's uh, what they need from that CK. Doesn't even have his armor yet, already putting in some work. Now almost up to 1,000 gold. Yeah, top of the net worth by about 600. And the Mushi OD continues to farm in the top lane and also is going to grab the bounty rune away from Fata. So we'll see what type of rotations they want to make with Mushi or, or Death Prop. They have the Exorcism now, so maybe they want to make something happen in that regard. You talked about getting an objective early on in the game. We'll see if he moves somewhere else or if he tries to push into the mid tier one tower sometime soon. I wouldn't mind seeing a gank attempt on mid one as well before he's level six but it feels like he's just been very well guarded. There's a lot of vision around him. yapsor has been there just kind of babysitting him the entire time. It's hurt his levels, but it's meant that they haven't found any real success against the Amber Spirit, just that one kill. Man. Ana's doing great. Level seven to level five in the mid lane. Really good experience advantage for him. You have been denied. Fata as well, just kind of waiting for some sort of an opportunity. Just been chilling top, blasting some waves, maybe hoping someone will uh, end up diving a tower or something. He can come in and go for an RP. But other than that, his only mission is just try and get those levels. Yeah, he's just farming the jungle now. He's got the Quelling Blade at the ready. The Absor looks to be there's invisible, but there's a sentry right there. Stomp, double edge. I don't think Ice 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 has enough damage, but it's going to push the Absor back for now and give him some more space to work with. Oh, Jabs is nearby, though. Kind of wants to make something happen. This is really what you're waiting on from Mineski is this budge. What, can he, what else can he get done in the early game? That's where your, I think, ganks are coming from if you're, if you're Mineski. 1-0 and 3. Not too bad. Yeah, he's finding a couple of kills. Mm, Stampede's still on cooldown. No, it just came off cooldown at this point. Ice 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 has it at the ready if they want to use something and uh, try to go for a kill. There's the armlet done for the CK. So, do you think he's going to start rotating around or maybe I mean, get a push going? I think he's pretty content, right? As they don't want to commit to anything because then that allows Death Prophet to commit somewhere else and then Radiance maybe you won't be able to rotate in time for the ultimate or something like that. So, I think they'd rather respond to movements that come out from the dire. Right. And it looks like that might be top lane here. Yeah. They are assembling with a smoked DP. And they scan correctly for secret. There are so many heroes here. Mushi is pushing in. Yapsor on the trees, getting some good vision as we speak, trying to maybe find Mushi, but. Nana is invis for now, or I, was, I, I think he's smoked up, so they're going to try to bait this out potentially. We'll see if they can't find a kill or two. But yeah, I think they're just going to back up. We'll see. They're trying to find something. There's the extra, and they're just going to go for the push on the tower. 
Yeah, I think they were hoping they could just catch one person, uh, but now they're just going to reveal Jack themselves. Jack just running. There's the stampede. Hook is going to connect on Father. I think it actually was skewering away, in fact, and that's a problem. Boundless Strike coming in. They've got the Thunder Strike. Crypt Swarm coming in back. They've got the Glimpse, and Fata will fall on the other side. Looking for another kill here. They've got the Astral of Ace in trouble. Arm the toggle. Double edge. One more oh. auto attack. These toggles are sick. Are you kidding me? How is he going to get out of this? One more toggle again. Yes! Ice, Ace makes it out. That is insane. And on the other side, Nana's going to get a double kill with the Exorcism. Plus, they are putting pressure on this Tier 1 tower in the top lane, but Ace surviving somehow. Those toggles, my god. I mean, if it weren't for those toggles, they would have lost three cores across the map, so they do have that save there, but definitely not a good moment Run, here puppy. for Secret. Get out of there. Ice Ice Ace is on your tail. Get out of there. The stomp. Nope. Puppy juked him. He's got the kinetic field. I don't think he's getting out of this one. Double edge, see ya. Ice 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 will take the kill. And on the other side, Nana will finally fall. Fada comes in, and uh, they will take him out. Puppy is used. He, he's back here. He doesn't even have wards. Here, like, someone's gonna come drop a sentry around here, and they'll be like, "What the hell is this lion just back here with no wards?" It's like very strange. Jab, <laughs> remnant it down. Mid one gets the job done. Glimpse well, back. Static storm. They've got the level six. And now coming in is ice, ice, ice. They need to stomp. They've got it ready. Double edge. That's all they need. They don't even need the stomp to get the kill. Nicely done from Mineski. And that's gonna be a vanguard here for ice, ice, ice. If he wants it, he has it queued up there. And uh, quite a bit of physical damage, of course, coming out. Got your CK, a little bit of uh, Magnus and Power stuff going through. <laughs> like the past two minutes, we've seen a lot of rotations, a lot of action happening. It's because of those ultimates coming out now, a lot of level six heroes. And uh, we'll probably wait for the next exorcism for Mineski to make a move. Yeah, exactly. We just kind of get onto this timer. Every single time it rolls around, we want to go for a tier one tower with ease, and then maybe even to the Roche Pit after that. Once we start breaking into the 20 minute mark or so. Yapsor continues to just kind of make his way across the map. No real concerns about the ultimate or anything this game. He'd rather level up all your other skills. Yeah, he's not doing that much damage right now. He's got, what, boots earned, so just get all your abilities up and ready to go. Um, they did go Vanguard on Ice Ice Ice, interestingly enough. Uh, he already has Stampede for some sort of initiation. They have Glimpse back as well. He'll get the Blink, I would assume, afterwards, but just tank up for now and try to stay alive against the CK in general. Yeah, and now they have the really early four staff on Mushi here, too. Be able to catch someone out of position on the right. side of Team Secret. Also kite some of these heroes as well. So, oh, Fada, that's a blink. Yeah, he's got it ready. He's just gonna have to buy it from the side shop. What do you think they back up? Maybe smoke, go yeah. for an RP play. Uh, the problem is, well, they'll need to get some decent vision, I would guess, because currently the radiant vision into that dire jungle is not too great. So, Dyer's might be a little bit tough to find top. that correct target that they want top. with the smoke gank. Right. And Fada's actually just gonna show with the blink here. Oh no, he's not gonna step into vision by the looks of it. He's sitting around this top lane. Shock waved out the wave. They've spotted Mushi. Jabs is looking. That hook was very close, actually. Just a little bit to the left, and he gets that hook and gets the kill more than likely. But he's able to get out in time, and he's back in the base. Everyone just dodging each other all over the map here. And uh, that means Secret continuing to get that farm. And two kill lead. A little bit of a gold deal on the side of Maneski, but nothing uh, too major of a concern right now, I think, if you're on Team Secret. So five to seven, top net worth is Mushi. They have this RP ready to go. Uh, Exorcism is back up. Do you make a move if you're Mineski? Uh, what's like that? Like that? He's yeah. He definitely wants to make something happen. He's far away from any sort of a, a next item. Just getting his tranquils delivered now, and that'll be that long wait for the blink dagger. So yeah, I'd like to get something done with Stack Storm probably from Ninja Boogie. Maybe after the 14 minute rune. Uh, it's currently it is Seeker who are going to try and make that blink play. Yeah, they've got the smoke up. Ninja Boogie is not the target they want, but they're going to run right into him. The reality was coming in. They've got the Earth Spike easy kill. No blink RP needed. They'll take the bounty run. On top of all of that, now do they continue on or do they back up is the question. Looks yeah. like they're just going to farm. It's not the hero they wanted, but it also cost them absolutely nothing. So it's not too big of a deal. Just a little bit of time from their cores. A uh, little bit of damage onto that tier 1 tower in the mid lane, but... Just information, I suppose you could say, for Team Secret. Yes. And we talked about vision. The vision from the Dire has looked quite a bit better this game. Got that nice tier uh, ward in behind the tier one tower over on the Radiant off lane. Got some wards in the mid lane too. Trying to protect their tier one. Yeah, this vision is going to be crucial, especially for Jabs to find some kills. They have the silence up. They need to glimpse. They're going to find it. There's the static storm, but he misses the kinetic field. The hook also missing. Mid one's going to run it away all the way towards the bottom root spot. And he should be fine. And in the meantime, Ace will find a kill on Ice, Ice, Ice getting dropped down. So 
And they miss narrowly for Mineski, and they lose a hero in the process. Now the Hex from Puppy, they've got the Earth Spike. Here comes Fada RP oh, nice. onto two. Where's the Skewer back there? The Kinetic Field, it won't help them at all. They've got the Searing Change. It's going to be used. The Wukong's command. This is a disaster for Mineski. The Glimpse Stack won't save them. It's three dead, and Ace gets a mega kill spree. They might want to get more, perhaps this Tier 1 tower, but that is a great fight for Secret right there. Very good communication from the side of Team Secret. You can see, uh, you know, you talk about Bane with, like, Tiny Eye or something like that, and you just get, like, sleeping to relocate. That's what that looked like. You just Start off with one stun from the line into the hex. Plenty of time for the RP to come through from the TP. Yeah, fought a beautiful position for that blink RP. They will take Puppy and they will keep their tier one tower alive. There's not much. Uh, it looks like Secret couldn't transition into that push. So at the very least, they will secure a support kill and give some more room for Ice 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 in this bottom lane. But a very good fight nonetheless for Secret getting those three kills there. And you can see Ice 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 is actually looking to address all of that physical burst that we just saw in that last fight by going for the straight up Crimson Guard. Well, Mushi is indeed looking at mid one. The Tree Dance will come out. There's the silence. They bring him back in. They've got the Spirit Siphon and they've lost the Absor. Mineski getting a nice kill there. Oh, they're gonna pop the exorcism. Yeah, I mean, this is it, you're close to the tier one tower. You get a kill. Push into an objective with the exorcism. Fada is at the max in power, but he's not here. So there's not really anything for mid one to do. His slight's also only level two. So, you can't really do too much about this. Mineski, they've seen the remnant. I don't think mid one's going to move over in this direction, considering that they're pushing the tier one tower. So, they're just going to back up for now and uh, look to reconvene another day. Maybe not. Dyer also get the tower bottom lane, too. So, two towers done there, and Seeker is kind of sitting around during all of this. Don't really feel confident going in. It looks like this is kind of Mineski's response to the RP actually being used. They say, okay, let's put some pressure in both lanes. Don't really feel like they have a very good response for us, right? You don't have a line that can really do anything. He's very poor. Uh, it's understandable. It's only the Magnus jumps that are going to do too much. CK's not that farmed. Uh, he's trying to build up into a little bit of damage here with an Echo Saber. Right, neither is the Ember Spirit. They really need this Empower to kick in. They're, they're going to get a lot of farm. Like, the Ember Spirit's going to go for a Battle Fury on top of the Empower as well. So you give a bit more time to mid one and things get a lot easier. But uh, they are still losing a couple of tier one towers. And we'll see how Secret respond. The tower pressure from Mineski is also pretty low without Exorcism as well. Right. Uh, but uh, Nice hook and a static storm. This should be a kill with Ice 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 and the double edge. And it is very nicely done. But in the meantime, Secret will move immediately into Roche. And uh, they should finish this pretty quickly. I'm not sure Mineski kick in. They, they do have the Sanity's Eclipse, but nobody's over there. And Yapsor is, of course, a moving ward at this point. Yeah. CK can be coming quite a bit of a uh, better Roshan hero these days. That you can just uh, pop the Phantasms, head into the pit. The Illusions, yeah, finally. He'll tank it up some, and uh, he will snag it up for himself here. So Ace looking rather scary, quite a bit of damage, hard to bring down in these engagements. Would need uh, quite a bit of burst there from the CK. What do you think he goes for next? Maybe he's going to get BKB after he has the Psycho Saber and Armlet done? Uh, BKB, their initiation, I wouldn't mind a blink um, down, relatively yeah. early on, especially if you have mid one going super greedy, but... They're going to have to decide exactly how much priority they're going to get. Mid one just wants to be like super mobile across the whole map with this Battle Fury just going from lane to lane. Yeah, he's getting pretty close. Starting off with the drum, getting to that Battle Fury. He's uh, about a thousand away at this point. But up against the uh, OD, even just the DP and the general magic damage, plus that Disruptor being such a pain. Ace just queuing up the easy cookie cutter BKB for now. So if you're worried about mid one, if you're worried about the CK, do you want to be more active for Mineski? Do you want to try to get more object objectives done? Yeah, I think they should just be, again, just flying around Exorcism as much as they can. I'm sure that's their main goal. Currently, they're smoked up, looking towards that mid lane, but there's a bunch of the Radiant Heroes here. No one's really playing by themselves. And as he will smoke, they will head down towards the bottom lane, it looks like, in mid one. Just farming. He's got some remnants ready to go. He's just going to, I think, head into the trees and just peace out. Top yeah. lane, I th yeah, think... Yeah, doing the exact same thing. He's also just peacing out. Yeah. Um, he kind of just runs into uh, Mushi, and this is one thing about the Sport Monkey King that we haven't really talked about, is that you don't really need the Jingu Mastery to do all these annoying uh, side lane pushing things. You can just hop along the trees, just use your Primal Spring, use your Boundless Strike. Yeah. You don't do that much damage to your support, but you can still just endlessly push waves, and you're very hard to deal with. It's a lot like Coddle, where you have to commit a lot. They're going to find Puppy here. He's been caught in the Kinetic Field. There's the Centaur Conqueror, rather, Centaur World our Ultimate. Good stun. There's going to be the RP oh, attitude. The Wukong Wook Wook Command coming out as well. Ace blows up one. They're about to get two more. The Static Storm was perfect, and now they should find these kills. They're going to have Stomp coming out from Isaac Sight doing work. Great Sanities. What a turnaround from Mushi. They're going to get the Aegis, but now Zebra will back up. The Wukong's Command is still there. They pop the Exorcism. They want the CK, and they're going to find it more than likely with a Dismember coming in. What a turnaround coming in from Mineski to find that fight going their way. Oh, that Crimson Guard from Ice Ice Ice, saving everyone, protecting so much of the damage for the team. And you can see that uh, when the RP came through, they're all just stuck in there, and they kind of collapse in on top of the side of Mineski. They want to try and bring down some of those heroes, and then Ice 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 just gets the huge three-man stomp right into the Sanities. Yeah. Easy cleanup for Mushi.
So they could have gotten more, just the Aegis going the way of uh, Aegis and CK, I should say, rather going the way of Mineski. And they're still kind of concerned probably about the CK getting a lot of farm, Ember Spirit as well, kind of getting close to the battlefield. I think he actually has it at this point in time and just getting around the map and split pushing for, for Secret. That seems to be the name of the game now that they've used that RP. But. Man, I know Jazz loves his Midas, but uh, he just got like 700 gold. He's going to lose a little bit of it. Yeah, he will. And try to deny himself here, potentially sticks up. Trying to run and he gets it. Nice. What a hero. Yeah. That's not irritating at all or anything. You just spent like five seconds chasing this guy. <laughs> You're supposed to have this kill. Nope. He doesn't even have a soul ring. So, he'll deny himself a 1k lead from Neski at 20 minutes into this game. A couple more items coming out. Fada has picked up a Shadow Blade. Uh, in terms of other items, Spirit Vessel for Yapsor, he's done a pretty good job. And Ace is building into what looks to be the BKB. He has the Ogre Club right now, and he's got the rest of the recipe and the Mithril Hammer in his Quick Buy, so trying to get to Magic Immunity. And what else besides the Battle Fury? I think that's about it. The, uh, the Shadow Blade doesn't feel as good as it usually does to me this game. Uh, he doesn't really have anyone who can fight with him right now. Right? You have a CK who's not very mobile. You can't, like, Shadow Blade in, and then he, the CK has to be pretty close. He can't, like, blink in on top or anything like that. Right. So it feels more like it's just to help out with his own split push. And there'll be some initiations and some scouting during the team fights. And maybe that uh, that factor of having, like, Magnus doesn't want to be the primary initiator most of the time, right? You see, he wants to, like, come into the middle of an engagement. He wants someone else to kind of run in there first so he can spot that really good RP. Yeah. Collapse first, then they can just jump in and get the RP skewer back like he's had at least two or three times in this game. He's had about yeah. a couple of two-man RPs at this point, so. So if there's no sentries down or something like that, he can kind of do that scouting himself and try and find those good RPs, but... Just continues to be a little bit of split-push game here. Still very tight, 10 to 11. I mean, we keep talking about, but mid one and the CK. You look at the late game for Secret; it, it feels pretty good. I mean, oh, fantastic. Wu Kong's command as well, on top of all of that. Like, it seems like they've got late game in spades at this point. Yeah, I think the next big problem for them will be the uh, BKB for the OD. They're gonna try and probably pressure in with that from the side of Mineski, and that'll be the big fight that they're gonna have to try and win from the side of Secret. But it helps if Disruptor's dead. Yeah, and they're gonna find him here. The hook comes out. Fada, he's got the skewer available. They use the finger. They blow up the Disruptor. And now they've used the Stampede, and they're gonna try to find something RP onto two from Fada. The skewer back under the tier. Two tower, they've got damage. Where's the CK coming in? Jack's getting low at this point. They pop the extra in the Wukong's command coming out. Nana in trouble, getting caught and killed. Three dead. Secret with a great fight now for Mineski will lose, and that is a giant fight. A great RP again from Fada. He's hitting pretty much all of them and skewering back into the tier two tower for them to follow up with the Wukong's command. Yeah, Ninja Boogie's been pretty instrumental in a lot of these team fights. All of them have been very important and they've been really well placed. Uh, and I think the problem there, I guess Mineski just felt like, yes, their disruptor just got blown up, but we kind of have to fight or they're just going to chase us down. They have this Ember Spirit. He's going to be like running after us and just steering chain, one after another. We have to like try and take a good fight, just blow up one of their heroes too. But Isosites didn't quite have the damage there under the tower. So ends up in a pretty bad decision there from Neski in the end. And uh, it'll be Secret pushing up the mid lane here a little Oof. bit. Good sentry, but Ninja Boogie's able to back up. And they're going to push into this tier 2 tower. Glimpse back in. Fada needs to be careful. Oh, nice. And the hook from Jack. And the kinetic field on top. Good boundless strike. Fada's not dead yet. He has no skewer. There's the static storm. He needs some help here. He's getting low. And they've got the stop. At least onto one. One second cast bolt. Puppy's in trouble. Earth's back onto two. But it will not save him. The urn charge taking him down. And they will hold their tier 2 tower. Ace on the run. Very good play from Jabs and Ninja Boogie. The combination, the glimpse into the hook. Beautifully yeah. done. Excellent punish from him just trying to scout and play a little bit aggressive there. Well, yeah, so at this point, he's got himself up into a medallion looking at that solar crest. Great this game. Very good against OD. And then he already has that uh, beautiful spirit vessel. Who doesn't love that thing? Yeah, I mean, it's such a good item. And you're able to get so much farm on this Monkey King because of what you were talking about with the split pushing. Your, your primal spring, your, your boundless strike, you clear waves so quickly. And he's just making his home in this top lane right now, just jumping on trees and, and finding waves to clear. Yeah, it's very hard to catch him out. You pretty much have to be like waiting with like a either a thunder strike or something to keep giving vision on top of him as he retreats into the trees or some sort of big hook play. But uh, the Dire Heroes, they aren't there. They're down the bottom lane, and they're scouted out here by Puppy. He drops a sentry and an observer. Yeah, so we'll see if Mineski wants to back up. Exorcism is still down. Mushi has a couple of items to work with here. And uh, we'll see if they want to push into this tier two tower in the bottom lane. His BKB's not done yet. Oh, yeah, Ice does. <laughs> yeah, he's just, in there. he's just running straight in. As a centaur, that's probably fine. Yapsor gets the balance strike off. There's no fall, but it looks like maybe there is. Riyadh Rift coming in, the Chaos Bolt on top. At a two second stun, he pops the Crimson Guard. Fada's not there for the fall, plus they have the sentry. So they see Fada, of course, using that Shadow Blade. And mid one, not there. He uses Boots to Travel to get elsewhere. And he's just trying to get these bounty runes across the map. And Mineski, they will back up. They're not going to try to take this tier two tower. 
and this gives Secret an opportunity to continue to pressure top lane with mid one. Yeah, you can see Ace just kind of grabbed him and then started running back. I think they were trying to bait an exorcism out and just like retreat from the fight, but they're concerned about the fact that if the uh, stampede goes off, then they can just be on top of them. Even if you're like baiting at a safe, or at least what feels like a safe distance, suddenly all of Maneski just romps on top. So uh, they immediately go for the smoke, try and go for the mid lane, but nobody's going to be here. It looks like it was well scattered out here by the side of Maneski. They're all hiding in their base well behind the tier twos. Again, plenty of sentries put down. They're trying to spot those movements from Fado with the Shadow Blade. They are back at home, staying well behind the tier two at the very least. They have spotted out one. They're going to get the hex off. They're looking for the earthquake. They will find it. There's the hook save, though, coming in from Jabs. Another one keeps his teammate alive. Ice, 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 a little far out, but they will not go and initiate on a hero that tanky. They decide to back themselves up. Now we have to start looking at Roshan again because it's getting up uh, pretty soon at this point. We're about to hit the first respawn marker, and we'll see what it's going to be in terms of the timing. One minute and 38 seconds, so in secret has done a good job of keeping these waves pushed out for the most part. The save potential fudge is always just, like, so underestimated. I, I guess it doesn't matter as much when you're playing just, like, normal games and everything, but in the competitive scene, it's uh, oftentimes teams are so, like, they have this formula, right? They want to smoke, they want to find some pick, and they're so good at these setup plays where you're just seeing, like, Puppy getting way ahead, and he knows he has all this time uh, for someone to come and catch up, so he's willing to be a little further away. But when you have something like this Pudge, you can just disrupt that whole flow. It kind of takes away from your whole plan. Doesn't matter too much for them, though. They just grab the easy tower. Yeah, so we're sitting on a tree, in a tree. But uh, they will take the tier 2 tower. They'll start pushing up high ground. And I think they're just going to do some chip damage back up for some TP rotations. Ace, he's going to pop the Phantasm and go for this, though. This tower's already taking a lot of damage. The Glimpse comes in. And there it is. The Glyph will come out. Mushi is here as well. They've all rotated back in. The Illusions will do some small damage, but that's just Phantasm used. Some chip damage and Secret backing themselves away. Easy retreat as we still wait for that next Roche. Feels like it's been a while, but uh, he'll be back pretty soon. 35 yeah. more seconds or so. And uh, he will be carrying a lovely little bit of cheese there. Something to try and grab up here, maybe facilitate someone into a high ground push. We'll have to see. And Mineski are going to make a move here. They're going to try to head to the bottom lane. Taking up mid one would be probably the best bet for them, but it's going to be tough. And he continues to farm and get a lot. They're going to go for the Astral. Oh, no. That's not what you wanted to see. That is unfortunate. <laughs> oh. Oh, happens. Yeah. But mid one is able to escape, obviously, moves back up to the top lane. He's farming very well. I mean, he's working on a Daedalus now, and this is something, again, you have to be very concerned about. Not just the CK, but mid one as well. As he's really been untouched for the past few minutes, it feels like. Yeah, if this hair comes out on the CK, I feel like Ace is going to be very chunky, very hard to deal with. Uh, especially, what if when we actually get to this Roche fight, we're going to have uh, the Exorcism and the RP, so I guess no one wants to whiff any of their ultis, of course. But uh, the Static Storm, probably a little bit better of uh, roaching potential on the side of the Dire, simply because of how good Pudge is. You can just like throw out a bunch of hooks, you can constantly threaten, uh, and it's extremely low risk, obviously. Whereas if you're like a Magnus or something, you know, you're not just gonna like face check the pick with your Shadow Blade or something. Right. And mid one continues to farm up. Lots of items coming out. He has the Solar Crest. Ice, Ice, Ice working in and out. Skewed back into the tier three tower. Good usage of that Searing Chase as the Stampede comes in. Should be a kill. Ice, Ice, Ice about to fall with the Boundless Strike. They don't even need it. Mid one will secure the kill with the last hit. So really good stuff there. Finding a pick. And now can you transition this into an objective like Roshan or something? I think he knows he's very far away, at least from like the Roche pit and everything. So it's going to take a pretty fast and quick rotation of the side secret to get there. Someone had to be down there pushing that lane. He's just trying to like find some information. At this point, they don't really have the deepest wards from the Dire. It's actually been very uh, Roshan-centered. They kind of know that that's the next, next big thing coming up, and they're way better set for it than the side of Secret. Dyer, uh, shouldn't be too much trouble, I'd say, for Ice Ice to get back into the game and just head over to the Shrine. Yeah, 28 seconds. He's not down for that long. Some good vision over towards the Roche pit as well for the Dire. They have one up in the, the top jungle, and then they have one around the pit on top of that. So The problem, though, would be that although they have really good vision for the side of Maneski, I would say that the, the wave push looks uh, obviously a little bit better there for Secret because they have this Ember Spirit, they have this Monkey King, so they can kind of pressure back uh, in a separate way just by forcing down these towers like they are right now with Ace. And if they can spot like two heroes in different lanes from the side of Maneski, that's when they're just going to rotate instantly to the pit. And they can kind of tease it a little bit, too. They can go around, they can deward something, kind of wait for that response from Maneski, and then try and jump them there with the RP. Right. It just feels like the past 10 minutes have belonged to Secret in terms of map control. They even have a 5k lead. It's 15 to 13 in terms of kill score, but taking all of these towers, taking the map control certainly helped them. Puppy is spotted. There's a sentry there. The silence comes out. There's the Glyph's kinetic field. Not in time. 
And uh, instead, they will go for the stomp. Uh, P, they drop another sentry in trouble. There's going to be the skewer out, the RP, and they've got the static storm, but it's missing. RP comes out finally. Sanity's dropped down. They're looking to get these kills. Two for two trades so far, and they blow off the third. Ace gets a double, absolutely dominating Ninja Boogie and Nana, and now they're going to turn this into a tier two tower as well. Yeah, just not quite fast enough there with the stacks on that time. Had he stopped the skewer, might have went a little bit better there for uh, Meneski in that fight, but Secret coming out on top. Plenty of damage still left with Ace here. Good news is they didn't use Exorcism for Mineski. They still have it for the next fight. Plus, he has buyback. I don't think they're going to lose this tier 3 tower anyways. It looks like they're probably just pushing ship damage with the Phantasm and Illusions. Now they're going to reality back to the Ice 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 back in. Death Prophet will buy back. They want to get this kill. He pops the Prism Guard. And of course, the Spirit Vessel doing some That's serious work too. And he's just dead pretty much instantly. Now he's trying to leave. There's the Wukong's command. They don't want to fight into this. Nana still hasn't popped the Exorcism yet. And they will back up. And Monkey King just sitting in a tree on top of the hill. Yeah. He's not sorry, actually. No. No, that's, that's not really true. I think he's enjoying what's happening he's here. 9k lead now. The split push is just a little bit too much here for Mineski. So focused on these big ultimates like Sanities and uh, the Exorcism. It's not really a big concern for Secret. They just love clearing these waves with Monkey King, Ember Spirit, and Magnus able to keep up too, even just through neutral creeps. It's, you know, not that fast for most offlaners these days, but... Bada's quite fine with it. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. And it, it feels like this is starting to slip away from Mineski or Trent. I mean, it's a 10k lead for Secret. They just took that last fight. They've taken plenty of buildings. And the late game, you've got an OD and a Death Prophet, but mid one continues to get farmed here, Trent. Yep, I think you just look for one core pick, and then we're just right into the Roche. I need decent items coming up here. Halberd was actually the next decision there for me, Absor. Like that, this game too, against the OD. And he's super farmed too. Try and catch Mushi before he can get off his BKB, and that fight's pretty much instantly won. Maybe the Zagadim Scepter from the Centaur is going to be a big item in terms of keeping the team alive. He's uh, 500 gold away from it. This is going to be a pretty big item in terms of disengaging or damage mitigation. Stampeding into the pit over the walls, perhaps. Yeah, that's true. A couple different options there, but you forget about that. But uh, secret. They still have this nice vision here, and it's not been dewarded quite yet here from the side of Secret, so... Maneski have that advantage, and again, they do have the hooks, which are pretty good. Uh, they will spot the ward now. Yeah. Good grab by them, but there it is, the Agnum Scepter, as you said, so perhaps they'll have a chance here. It looks like they're eyeing it up here as uh, Jeff throws out a dust He hit Fada, but he didn't want to go for the hook, and I understand why. Yeah, I mean, Fada blinked away pretty much instantly anyway, so it, would, it was going to be very difficult. So, now Maneski... Now we dance. Yeah, it's just around the Roche Pit. Everybody's having a good old time, trying to farm up, trying to take a fight potentially between these two teams. You know what's great when Ember Spirit when this is happening? Because you can just leave remnants and keep You're coming back. and literally all over the map. Yeah, you, you have to force something out of the Neski. Mineski. Oh, Yapsor. Ice 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 is going to jump in, misses the stun. No, he got it, actually, but they missed the hook on the Yapsor. He was stunned on the trees. Now coming in his mid one, drops the steering chains. Roshan getting about half HP. Yapsor coming through. They've got the Phantasm drop down. Good save with the Astral for Mushi. Now the real rack in. He's going to use the BKB to try to man fight this. Nana pops the Exorcism. Three seconds stun. He does get the Exorcism off, but there is going to be plenty of damage to the Wukong's command. They're looking to find Yaps on the other side. Fata backing his put himself away. They will be one for one trade, but taking down Nana is the most important thing here, and Jabs is going to be next. Mid one getting a double kill. They're looking for Mushi. They don't quite get the searing change from mid one. So it's still a two for one trade, but Yapsor up in the trees. Jumping in is going to be the centaur. Stomp looked for, but he couldn't find it. It's a stun for three seconds for Ace and gets blown away by Ace. The amount of damage he's doing is serious. The two man stun from the balance strike. Sanity does nothing other than drain the mana and four dead. About to be five. A double kill for mid one. A perfect fight for Secret. Despite losing Fata, they will still clear out Mineski. Yeah, it's not off to you. You're going to compliment a solo RP on a Pudge, but that was actually the right move, I think, from Fana. It was a worthy sacrifice. He made sure that the DP was going to die for sure, and then the fight becomes a lot easier. Uh, you know, if she survives that one little engagement, she gets hooked out of the Astral or something like that, manages to escape and start regening back up. Maybe Mineski can find some way through the fight, but I think Fana just realized, hey, I just make sure that doesn't happen. The rest of my team can clean this up. My Monkey King's as farmed as I am at this point, so I'm okay with the sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, he's doing some serious work. Solar Crest, Spear Vessel. 21 in terms of his levels. And they're going to work on this tier 3 tower. There's no buybacks in Mineski. It is pr relatively short cool, uh, death timers for most of them, although Mushi is up in 36, which is the real big problem. They might just lose Rax here, honestly. I don't, they, they have no way of getting back and defending this at this point. So this is just going to be Rax here for Secret. And Mineski can only really look on at this point. I hear this mid one guy is pretty good at Ember. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard, heard that rumblings well. before. This game has gone pretty well for him. He's been all over the place. Tons of gold. Catching up with the CKs. Well, definitely can't count on Ace. You know, he's been empowered a lot, which helps, but 
It's been a roam across this map. No real threat zone. So nice hook, though. They've got we'll Puppy. Puppy. Dead for 58. Now it might be time to leave Pure Secret. Yapsor, he got Glimpse back. They couldn't find any further initiation onto him. He will back himself up. Maybe they can try to finish Roche off. But uh, just feels like a matter of time for Secret. They're so far ahead at this point. 18k net worth advantage. And uh, you're looking for something if you're Mineski. Yeah, and the big deal in this game, of course, has been the split push and just the waves. And now with the racks down, this, of course, just becomes even more difficult. I mean, mid one with a Daedalus is <laughs> doing some serious work. <laughs> Daedalus and power, now going for another Daedalus. And plus, we didn't even take Roche. I mean, he's still there. So that uh, is still putting that pressure once again here onto Mineski. Exorcism in four, so they are prepped for the fight. Yeah, they're trying to, to take something here from Mineski. Last so Roche fight did not go well. And here we go, mid one pops the BKB. Good Stampede, though, gets him up to the high ground, force away from Jabs. And Secret actually won't find anything here, but that is Stampede used. Although mid one did pop his own BKB. And uh, both these go yeah, back up. Look at bottom lane. The creeps are there. You got to do something, Mineski. And that will open the door for Secret if they want to take it. Yeah, Mushi's already there. And with them seeing that, maybe they go into the pit. Now, they haven't taken down that shrine yet, though. So they could also just take their time, right? Smoke up, maybe go for another pick, take down some of those shrines from the side of Mineski. And, you know, the, the threat's really there for Mineski. They're the ones that need this Roche more than the side of Secret. I mean, this is just going down the checklist. If you're Secret, get these buildings. Try to keep the waves pushed out as best as possible. And then move into the Roche eventually. It is Aegis and Cheese this time around. No refresher shard. It's getting low. Jab is going to come in, look for a hook. He's going to miss just narrowly. Wasn't close enough. Good positioning from Secret to be on the side of Roshan. They're going to jump in with Puppy. They get the hex off. There's the Static Storm kind of missing. Puppy will get silenced up, but there's the Fada Skewer back. And Ninja Boogie will be the first to fall from Mineski as they try to all retreat away from Secret. Looking for some potentially onto Jab. His TP will complete. No. The Searing Chain. They don't even need the RP. Fada continues to cancel it. <laughs> He's just styling at this point. There. Yeah, the desperation plays are coming out. I mean, they're doing this kind of stuff when Mushi's like not even nearby. He's like pushing the bottom lane out because someone has to. And then this Ember just comes for like two seconds and counters everything that you just spent a, a minute away from your team doing. The map control for Secret has been serious for sure. Mid one continues to keep this bottom lane pushed out. Maybe they'll find Mushi. He's in the tree line actually. I don't think mid one has any idea, but okay, yeah, he does. And there's the RP. All right, well, easy. That's gonna be crits. Mushi dead. Found the strike, skewered up. He has no buyback, dead for 85, and this will lead into secret pushing bottom and trying to go for the GG here. Yeah, you have a, a, a Aegis enabled uh, with an Empower Ember Spirit, so he can just like go crazy. He doesn't need a team. He can kind of push one lane by himself. The others can focus that uh, easy set of racks in the mid lane. And he can just uh, try and get some easy picks. Mid one Ember Spirit making it <laughs> look easy. easy picks, Ace is looking for some of this DD. He's like, please just be here. It just ran out, but there's a rape here now on mid one uh, to add insult to injury. Uh, this is going to be nasty. He is plus 552 damage, not to mention his Daedalus procs. He is about to go ham on somebody if they're not careful. Oh, can you say unnecessary? Yeah. I like it. That's a two minute penalty, I'd say. Yeah. One in the box. They're going to push into the tier three tower bottom. Ace will just be up front. Puppy looking for a nurse spike. Can't quite find something, but I mean, they're just gonna get Megas here. Mineski can only watch, still no Mushi. They might find Puppy, they missed the hook timing. They will get the kill nonetheless, but it is again, just a lion at this point. Secret are so damn strong, they might not even need him. They're gonna pop the Wukong's command. They're going to work on the buildings. Nana is in with the exorcism, but look at the slide of fifth searing chains, do some serious work. He doesn't get the insta-kill, but he has done so much that it's ridiculous, and he blows away that poor Nana uh, death prophet. Not only that, but he will find another in the centaur. A double kill for him, he is just going ham right now. Middle Oh, There's the dismember. Can they find the stop the static storm? But it's too little too late. They hook onto Ace. Now he's in. He's going to find the triple kill. And GG is called. And Secret make it look easy in game number one, Trent. Uh, ultra kill there. And mid one is beyond godlike. No one could kill him. Very good at the end of the game there. Finishes out 12, 4, and 14. Damn. When yeah. you're ahead by 20k, you still die. I think they're feeling pretty good after that first series win there up against Egypt.